I can't even remember the last time that I prescribed a topical antibiotic for acne. Hey guys, Dr. Whitney Bow here, and in today's video, I'm gonna be talking to you about whether antioxidants, both used in skincare as well as in your diet, can actually have preventive or uh, therapeutic effects for acne. So for those of you who don't know me, I am Dr. Whitney Bow. I'm a board certified dermatologist based in New York, and I take a very holistic and integrative approach to the skin. Um, and I'm also known for my um, cutting edge aesthetic uh, techniques when it comes to in-office procedures. Um, so if you're interested in taking care of your skin from the inside out or the latest in uh, what celebs and TV personalities are doing in the office uh, with a uh, celebrity dermatologist, then you might want to subscribe. And if you find this video helpful, be sure to share it. So you guys may have noticed that there are some skincare products hitting the market that are claiming that, or they're drawing sort of this connection between antioxidants and acne prone skin. Um, and uh, I think it's a very uh, exciting moment in time because I started talking and lecturing and publishing about this topic um, about 10 years ago. Um, and now it's taken that long for skincare companies to sort of translate um, that that concept that you know that that science into real products um, and so i'm honored humbled um, to have been one of the first dermatologists talking about this uh, link between antioxidants and acne and i want to explain that whole concept to you today so in this video i'm going to explain how what uh, something called lipid peroxidation or oxidative stress within the hair follicle within the pore is connected to acne and i'm also going to give you guys some really practical tips, things you can start doing every single day that can help get your acne under control and potentially even prevent some acne flares as well. So first, a little bit of background. You know, when I was in training, we were taught that um, the sequence of events when it comes to acne was very simple. So first, uh, your skin cell turnover started to slow down, dead skin cells clogged the pore, and then P. acne's bacteria uh, got into that pore and then that triggered inflammation and that inflammation led to acne. So what was the treatment for acne? We had to kill off the P. acnes, you know, with topical antibiotics and benzoyl peroxide and that was going to, you know, treat the acne. Now, while I was in training, uh, a couple of studies started coming out showing that actually that sequence of events that had been accepted as dogma for so long in our world of dermatology was not accurate. So there were studies, basic science studies coming out showing that the precursor lesion to acne, something called a microcomedon. So when you biopsy acne prone skin before it even shows up on the skin as being acne, there's actually signs of inflammation and oxidative stress within that little microcomedon even before the bacteria get in there. So it seems as though the match that lights the acne flame and that whole inflammatory process is actually oxidative stress within the pore. And we call the process lipid peroxidation because you have these oils in that clogging that pore, right? And then if you have free radical damage and oxidative stress, within that environment, that can actually stimulate inflammation. And then after that, it actually sort of changes the environment in the pore. It, it makes it this, what we call micro aerophilic environment. It makes the, the environment conducive to P. acne. So it's that inflammation that's starting the process and then the bacteria come along, okay? So it sort of, is making us question this whole way that we're approaching acne, right? So that's what I was starting to think way back in 2010 when I was talking to my colleague, Dr. Alan Logan, and we put out this paper talking about the burden of oxidative stress in acne prone patients and suggesting that if acne prone patients started to use antioxidants more regularly in their skincare and load up on antioxidants in their diet and their supplementation, could they dial down the acne response? Could they actually get their acne under control? So I've been treating my acne prone patients with antioxidants for quite some time. And what I've learned is that ingredients that we traditionally used to think of as game changers for acne, 
benzoyl peroxide topical antibiotics, oral antibiotics, those can sometimes do more harm than good. So benzoyl peroxide creates oxidative stress. Oxidative stress is what's causing acne. So why are we creating oxidative stress and possibly even promoting premature aging and inflammation in the skin in order to fight acne and treat acne? So I rarely use benzoyl peroxide in my practice. And that's been something that I've been practicing for, for a very long time with my acne prone patients. Are there exceptions? There are exceptions. There's always an exception. But for the most part, that is not my frontline therapy. Topical antibiotics, I can't even remember the last time that I prescribed a topical antibiotic for acne. Again, you're leading to antibiotic resistance and you're damaging the microbiome. And now we know that it's not really the bacteria that's the precursor to this whole sequence of events that's leading to acne. It's oxidative stress, it's free radical damage. It's this oxidative, it's this, this oxidative burden that acne patients have that's really starting this whole inflammatory cascade. So rather than use things like topical antibiotics and benzoyl peroxide, I'm a big believer in using antioxidants. So you guys are seeing these antioxidants serums coming out that are talking about clear skin. I absolutely recommend using antioxidants topically as well as in our diet if you are prone to acne. So really my rule of thumb is to try to rotate very beneficial ingredients, things like retinol or bacuchiol. Bacuchiol doesn't have a strong science behind its acne protective effects, but it's very sort of new. And we're seeing that on a genetic level, it seems to behave very similar to retinoids. So I would not be surprised if bacuchiol ends up having benefits in acne prone skin. In the morning, you wanna use an antioxidant serum you wanna follow that with some kind of a broad spectrum sun protection, ideally mineral or physical. Then you also wanna have your cup of coffee. Coffee's a great source of antioxidants. You wanna finish that, you wanna finish your coffee and then you wanna have a cup of green tea. Great source of antioxidants. Throughout the day, you wanna be replenishing your antioxidants. So you wanna be you know, um, eating brightly colored vegetables. Eat the rainbow, right? Lots of colors on your plate will show that there's, it's gonna be rich in antioxidants. You can even have a little bit of red wine and dark chocolate if you'd like. Those are also good sources of antioxidants. So, so keep replenishing your antioxidant stores throughout the day. There's different categories in my head when I think of different ingredients and how often do we wanna use them. Sometimes, always, never. Antioxidants is a more is better situation. So you wanna really load up on your antioxidants. So again, I hope you found this video helpful. Um, it is so humbling and so exciting that you know when I start putting out information, publishing studies, um, putting out you know concepts and theories and lecturing on that information. When I see it being translated into you know products that brands are putting millions of dollars behind, um, it's it's really humbling. It's really flattering, um, and I'm I'm excited that I can give you guys a little bit more of more insight into. Um, sort of the theory and concepts behind uh, some of these new product launches. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have any other questions for me, comments, please, you know, be sure to share them. And if you found this video helpful, share it with some friends. Okay, be well, take care.